Hello and welcome to another video in my off season. This one's going to be a little different from uh, the kind of videos I've done. I've done prediction videos and I've done top 25 videos, all that kind of stuff. This is going to be the first and hopefully a series of history videos. It's probably going to be a long one, so I'm forewarning you guys. This is the biggest point differential in college football history. In probably, excuse me, in probably football history. But there's a lot more to it than just that. Um, I am, of course, talking about the October 7th, 1916 game between Georgia Tech and Cumberland University. Um, there's a lot of history that goes on here, and there's a lot of, of interesting facts. Um, for starters, the coach of the Georgia Tech team was none other than John Heisman. Yes, that Heisman, the man they named the trophy after. And it, it brings, it's an interesting fact. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right into this. The score of that game was 222 to nothing. Absolute and utter domination. Georgia Tech had 978 rushing yards to Cumberland's negative 42. Georgia Tech didn't have any passing yards, but Cumberland did. They had 32 passing yards, but they also threw six interceptions. Cumberland had a total of 15 turnovers. Georgia Tech had none. That was one of the games Georgia Tech won that year. They went 8-0-1 that season, but were not named national champions. Pitt and Army were co-national champions that year. So, that's the stats. What's the history? The history is um, that John Heisman, he was a multi-coach for Georgia Tech back in a time when that could happen. It would not work fly anymore, but he coached the Georgia Tech football team. He also coached the Georgia Tech baseball team. Now, the previous year, Cumberland University played Georgia Tech in baseball and won that game 22 to nothing that that pissed off Heisman he was not happy and he swore he would get his revenge well it just so happened the next season in football Georgia Tech was set to play Cumberland but it's not your typical revenge story Cumberland, it's not a Cumberland showed up with their well-trained football team and Georgia Tech stomped them into the ground. Nope. The reality is Cumberland had disbanded their football team before the 1916 season and um, in doing so had somewhere in the paperwork forgotten to uh, inform Georgia Tech of the move. Now, normally, if this happens, they would say, hey, look, we don't have a football team, and uh, we, we can't, we, we don't have a football team, we can't play you, I'm sorry. And the school would go, okay, it's fine, you know what, just don't worry about it, we'll, we'll schedule someone else, it'll be, it'll be fine. Well, Mr. Heisman was really looking forward to this game, because he wanted his revenge. He threatened to uh, enforce the fine that they could enforce because they were not notified in time. He could enforce a fine of $3,000. Now I know what you're thinking right now is, well, $3,000, that's like chump change. Uh, no, not really. Uh, back at the time, I don't know the inf actual inflation, but it was a lot of money. I mean, it could be somewhere closer to the 300000 you could get fined today if you were to say, hey, we don't want to play you. Sorry. So, he told Cumberland they either had to play the game or pay the fine. Now, 
I know what you're thinking. So, well, let, stop trying to make him sound like such a jerk. I mean, they should have notified him. Well, here's the thing. Back then, the schedules were made by a student at the university who was in a, like, student leadership role. I don't remember the exact name of the role. I can actually find out. Here we go. Uh, they were made by the, um student managers of the teams. So Cumberland's student manager, George Allen, um, was in charge of the schedules and he, in his studying and all that, slipped up and just forgot to notify Georgia Tech that the team was, uh, dis was disbanded and that the, the school could no longer afford to field the football team. So if a school can no longer afford to field a football team back in those days, they could not afford the $3,000 fine either. Heisman knew exactly what he was doing. And Cumberland was left with no other choice. George Allen had to go around campus and gather up 13 students, most of whom were fraternity brothers, and sent them to play Georgia Tech. Yeah. Thirteen guys who never played football weren't trained to play football. And here we are, sending them off to play one of the better teams in football at the time. So this blowout has some history here. It was essentially Georgia Tech playing people off the street. Essentially. So, what do you, I know, it just, it blows my mind that someone would pull that. I know you wanted revenge, but it just, it blows my mind that the man they named the Heisman Trophy after went to such depths to get his revenge. I'm going to read you a quote from him that was his, that was part of his halftime speech to them. Um, we're ahead, but you can't. You just can't tell what those Cumberland players have up their sleeves. They may spring a surprise. Be alert, men. No, okay. That's not a not a anything malicious there. No. Uh, what was the score at halftime? Uh, One hundred and twenty-six to nothing. Are you kidding me? What they might have up their sleeves? They don't even have a game plan, probably. Like, <laughs> um, I, it was just, it was such a blowout. And it's like, you want, you look at that and you say, you look at that score, 222 to nothing. And you say, how, how could that ever happen? How could one team blow out another team that badly? And the answer is, they didn't. Georgia Tech didn't blow out another team 222 to nothing. They blew out a non-team. 13 guys who prob I don't remember, but I don't think they ever played a game together again. So yeah. That's a little bit of history. I really didn't have a good ending point. Um, but that's a little bit of history of the Georgia Tech versus Cumberland massacre. That was the 222 to nothing game. It, it's surprising to see that that is um, that that was done by John Heisman, the guy they named the trophy after. The trophy that they want to give to people who they think not only exemplify excellence on the field but off the field and here is the guy the trophy's named after doing something so unsportsmanlike really but hey who am i to judge anyway that is the georgia tech cumberland game uh let me know what you guys think if you like this video um 
Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button uh, if you like what I'm doing. I kind of like doing these history videos. I'm kind of a kind of a nut when it comes to like history for sports and stuff like that. Um, so let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.